so much more time and money efficient and we will do just that. Hey guys, so last week I promised to you a series of text classification tutorials and today we're gonna start with logistic regression. So for those of you wondering why text classification, well, there's one episode in South Park and I'm a huge fan of South Park where Butters has to clean up a bunch of Twitter accounts of celebrities. I've got someone who I think can help. And so I want you to do for Mr. Seagal the same thing that you're doing for Eric Cartman. But PC Principal, I really don't have time. This man took the time to come to your school and help spread body shaming awareness. I think you can give him a little of your time. Yes, sir. And Cartman. And so any comments that seem inappropriate or hurtful in any way you need to delete and not include in your daily report to Eric. I wanted someone smart and hardworking. Well, do I gotta? You want detention? Well, if I get detention, I'll get grounded. Then you start today. Butters, it's your job to make sure Eric has a safe space. And then got a bunch of negative comments. The man! The man! The man! The man! The man! The man! He's gonna get me! He follows me everywhere! Do you see the man? Butters, what are you doing? Well, he's gonna get me! All in all, Butters ends up cleaning up those. And since Randy, Stan's father, is bullied at Whole Foods about not donating enough to starving countries, he figures out a way to solve both of these problems by just giving iPads to starving countries and supporting them through donations as payment for Twitter comment cleaning. To date, Shameless America has raised over $40,000. With that money, we are putting more and more iPads into these people's hands. With iPads, these people can finally help more Americans get rid of negativity on their social media. Oh, thanks, Jojo. I'm shame free now, and you can be too. So, at the end, I just thought to myself, well, just using machine learning would be so much more easier, so much more time and money efficient, and we will do just that. So, having said that, let's go to the notebook, and we're gonna use Google Collab environment for these notebooks. So, if you don't know what Google Collab is, then I suggest you check this video right here. So, the notebook consists of uh, a couple of parts. You can see all of them in the table of contents. If you want to open up the notebook right now, you can find it in the description and in the pinned comment down below. And it will consist of all of the notebooks that you're gonna use in the series. So if you don't really want to wait for the next week video to check out the notebook itself, I suggest uh, that you open it. I left all of them in the same link and you can check them right now. But check the video. Check the video next week. Cool. So a couple of parts. Imports. The packages we are going to use. Data, the data we're gonna use, vectorization, what we're gonna do with the text of tweet, modeling part, where we're gonna run the logistic regression, and then confusion matrix and a test part to show you how you could implement this. So going to the imports, you're gonna use just a couple packages. So pandas and numpy for data manipulation. Sklearn, I hope I pronounced it correctly. That will cover us with vectorization, logistic regression, splitting of our data and the confusion matrix. And we have one plot in the notebook, so we're using matplotlib as well. Now about the data itself, data is from Kaggle. What I want you to do is to go to the link provided there and download the data. The data set is called sentiment140. It's a data set of 1.6 million tweets and all of those tweets are annotated already with their sentiment, denoted as target. If it's a zero, it's a negative sentiment. If it's a four, it's a positive sentiment. I know, thinking that your negative is a zero and positive is a four, you would think that you have something in between, but you don't. You just have zero or four. So after downloading the data, you can read it. All you need to do is just change this pad here. If you don't know how to do it, check out the Google Collab video that I linked before. And after reading it, 
you of course want to print out the head of the data set and it shows all the variables that we have with the data set itself so target which is the sentiment id id of the tweet date date of the tweet and flag don't really know what that is only has one unique value so it doesn't really matter user the user who tweeted and the text of the tweet itself so if you look uh, into the classes the target variable of our data set we'll see that yes there's only two unique values a zero and a four and if you would look how those classes are distributed in the data set we'll see that they are equal so both negative and positive classes have equal amount of tweets that's a good thing in text or image or any other classification you most likely want to have an equal amount of classes why is that imagine a situation where you have 95 percent of the data set being one class let's say negative tweet and the other five being positive tweet what the model will learn is that it can say that each tweet that you give to it is a negative one and it will be correct 95 percent of the time and that without any other modifications to how you train your model result in a model which just does that predicts that any tweet you give to it is a negative tweet so having said that we move on to vectorization of the data and before that of course we need to split our data into a training and testing data set we need to have two data sets to train our model for those of you who are just starting out in data science uh, we use the training data set to train the model and we test it on the test sample just because we want to check if the model is actually learning the patterns within the data and not the data itself and the only way to check that is to use a separate data set for testing now what do i mean by learning the patterns instead of the data itself so learning the patterns is could be understood as how the data behaves in different situations so in station when the sentiment is negative and the sentiment is positive and learning the exact data is learning each and every tweet by memory and knowing that that one is negative and that one is positive just because the model knows them by heart so for turning the text of the tweets into actual features that you're gonna use for the model we use count vectorizer count vectorizer does one thing and one thing only so it counts the occurrence of each word within the tweet and gives that to the model so firstly it just checks what unique words we have in the data set and we do that by vectorizer.fit on the training data set and then when we transform the tweets it gives out vectors for each tweet containing the index of the words used in that tweet and the count of that word within that tweet so let's say we take the first tweet from our training sample and it says it was rain and cloudy in the windy city today we turn that into a vector and we get this just a bunch of indexes right here and the count of that word occurrence within the tweet so you might see that indexes are in ascending order and you may think well maybe a coincidence that all the words here in the tweet are in ascending order in the vocabulary but that's definitely not the case uh, if you want to check which word is which index you can do it using this cell right here and it will just print out to you each word and the corresponding index near it so if you check the index for word it it is 257841 and that's in the middle of the vector that we saw before while the word is the first one in the tweet so having vectorized our words within the tweet, we can go to modeling. And since it's logistic regression and we don't really need to compile the model itself, we just initiate the class, we set the maximum amount of iterations that you're gonna do, and then we train it on the training data. So for those of you who don't really know what logistic regression is, uh, you can check this link right here and it will lead you to a wiki page of logistic regression. I know it's a bit lame, but it explains it uh, quite well. But if you don't really want to do that, however, I highly suggest that you would. Logistic regression essentially is this big function and at one end you have the probability of uh, that tweet being, let's say, a uh, 
positive class, well, positive sentiment in this case. And on the other side, on the other side, so this is the target, the sentiment. And on this side, you have all the variables that you're gonna use to predict, is it an actually a positive uh, tweet? So what are those variables? Well, variables are each and every word that we have in the vocabulary. So when we made the vocabulary before, right here. So when we made that, we checked for all the unique, all the possible words that's gonna be in our tweet. And for each of that, we assign a variable to our logistic regression. When we turn a tweet into a vector, as I showed you before, it has the indexes of all the words used within the tweet and then the count of the occurrence of that word. So when the logistic regression gets that, it says, okay, so do I have the first word that I have in the vocabulary? Let's say it's I. No, I don't. Then it checks the second one, which is, let's say, was. And then at some point it checks it, which was 257,840 first word in the vocabulary. It says, okay, I have that one, and the occurrence of that word in the tweet is one. So instead of that variable, it inputs one. So this is how we get the variable inputs. The variables are just changed to the count of the occurrence of the word. So for those words that are not mentioned in the tweet, you get a zero, and for all the others, you get either one, two, or whatever the count may be. Now, all those variables, have a weight associated with it. What that weight does, it describes what that word's impact to the sentiment of the tweet is. So let's say a word like good will have a positive weight when trying to predict a positive sentiment. So if you have word good in your tweet, you have a high likelihood that the tweet has a positive sentiment. Let's say you have a word bad or uh, Monday. Let's say bad. We have a word bad or sad, something like that. That one will have a negative weight. Let's say something like minus 0.2 associated with it. Let's say a tweet has word sad once in it, like the one that we have in the notebook. Then that weight, and we assume it's minus 0.2, will be multiplied by the occurrence of that word so in our case one and then when all the words that occurred in the tweet are multiplied multiplied with their weights and added up you still not need to get a log of it and then you'll have a logistic regression and why we use a logistic regression instead of a simple regression you do simple regressions for regressions essentially when you want to get like five or ten as an answer instead of getting a class which is either positive or negative. So yeah, that uh, that should sum up the logistic regression thing. So we run the logistic regression, we run it for a thousand iterations to adjust those little weights that I was talking about, and we get an accuracy of 80%, which is great. Just by doing this simple model in these three lines, we get 80% accuracy. So what we want to check now is, does the model predict each of those two classes equally well? And for that, what we can use is a confusion matrix. So confusion matrix, for those of you who don't really know what it is, here's a link to it. Again, it's a wiki page, but it explains it well. So what it does is just counts the occurrences of predictions which were right and which were wrong and what did they predict. So here on the columns of the matrix, if I can express myself like that, you see the actual classes that were in the test data set. And on the lines, on the index here, you'll see what the model predicted. So here it predicted that the class is zero and the class was zero and it predicted that the class is zero but the class was four. So it was wrong. I don't really like to check the confusion matrix and occurrences. I much more prefer the percentage as it's easier for me to read. And from here, you can easily tell that the model predicts both classes equally well. Well, or equally bad. It depends on what kind of person you are. A half full or half empty glass. So yeah, that's pretty much it on how to do a logistic regression model. We already have it. 
it's quite good. 80% accuracy is really good off the bat. Considering that we take logistic regression and we do it as our base, like starting out model. Why? Well, before doing something significantly more sophisticated and something which takes much more time, not only from the coding perspective, because that's not really time consuming, but from the training perspective on the resources, we want to check if the problem is solvable at all. Having an 80% accuracy from logistic regression us the idea that this problem that we are facing with classifying tweets into negative and positive sentiment is solvable and quite easily. 80% accuracy is already usable, like by my standards. What we know even more from this little small notebook that we did is that the classes are evenly distributed, so we won't have a problem of the model overtraining on one class. What more is that the model already differentiates well between the classes so it predicts both classes equally well and lastly if we got 80 percent using logistic regression we should be able to get at least pretty much the same accuracy or better using more sophisticated models such as neural network as bird and the modified bird so having said all that I'm going back to the notebook to show you this. So let's say at this point logistic regression is great for you and you want to implement that. Well, I went on Twitter, got to one of Trump's tweets, this one, copied a random comment which said patriotic Americans stand proudly with President Trump, which is obviously a positive sentiment, and then showed you how you would go about predicting one comment or one tweet using your model. So before everything, you should need to save your vectorizer and save your, class save your classifier. Both of those can be saved to NumPy files. When you read your tweet, you need to vectorize it using the same vectorizer that we did before. Then you need to do a prediction on it using the classifier, so the logistic regression that we have. And then based on the output from the logistic regression, you'll know if the tweet is positive or negative. Now this example is for those of you who want to classify more than one tweet or more than one comment at a time. That's basically the same thing just for multiple items. It doesn't matter if it will be two tweets, 10 tweets or 1.6 million tweets. It will still work. So having said all this, I hope that you watched till this part. I hope that you click that like button and you subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. If you didn't, I would really appreciate if you would. And for next week, uh, we'll do a simple neural network. As I said, all the notebooks are linked in the description. You can check them now and don't need to wait for the videos. But I would appreciate if you would watch videos nevertheless. As for the code in the notebooks, some of it is mine. Some of it is just a random assortment from the internet. Some from some is from a year ago and some is from just now. So yeah, use it freely. And uh, if you make something fun with it, uh, don't forget to leave a comment down below. And if you can't link it in the comment, just uh, write me on Instagram or Discord or on my email. It's, it's my about info. So yeah, I would be really happy to see something come out of this. And that's all for today. I hope to see you really, really soon.